Hello, David Moore, Equity Advantage with Robert Smith of Peregrine Private Capital. And we sort of less, left the last segment talking about real estate a little bit. We, we started it talking about uh, Mr. Nelson and his thoughts on, on real estate investment. And, and I just, you know, I, I, I guess I want to say that, you know, people in difficult times, uh, there's always a flight to quality, right? And people talk about, tangible assets and they talk about we've all seen the ads on TV for gold and silver and palladium we hear the ads on the radio and the thing that drives me crazy is that uh, I believe real estate's the ultimate tangible asset and uh, anything that's a tangible asset in in let's say Wall Street speak is considered what an alternative dead money, yeah. dead money an alternative investment which sort of makes things seem to me, at least my mind, more flimsy when they're the oldest, most time-tested things in the history of mankind. So when we have people in these difficult times, obviously, if they're going to put money into a passive investment, putting your money into, and it's sort of interesting because these are securities and, and you know, basically definition of security is you're making money off the efforts of somebody else. So to buy into a DST, you have to work with somebody or through somebody like yourself, somebody that's licensed in securities. And I mean, that's what you are. You're, you're an investment advisor licensed in securities to sell that DSD product. Right. Uh, I think it's important you're working with brokers that have been through a hard time. I think you're working, it's very important you're working with vendors that have been through a bad time because pre-crash in uh, 05, 06, 07, how many sponsors were there? Close to 100. How many were left after the recession? 15, 20. How many are there today? 50. Yeah, so we, we went from 100 to 15 and 15 to 50. And a lot of those 50 have never seen a dark day. So, and I think when you and I were younger, I had a lot more hair on my head and I felt pretty invincible. Today I feel a little less invincible, and I've been. I've. I, I. I always say I'm happy to learn, tired of being taught. So when I look at a situation like we're in today, I, I think I probably still have some PTSD from last time. But when somebody's coming to you today, Bob, and you know, looking at you know a DST, obviously, you know, you talked about Keith earlier with Inland, and and you know, companies like that that have been through these things, they they've got good proven track records. You know, when when People come to you, what are they looking for? What are sort of the real benefits of, of working into, let's say, a Delaware statutory trust or one of the variations? Let's say, you know, maybe give an example of a 721 upread too and what that gives people the ability to do. But, you know, what are people looking for and why, why should they consider the DST at this point in time? And if they're looking at a DST, what should they know? Well, most people, everyone... Everyone ultimately ages out of management because managing your own dirt in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, emphasis on okay, not great. It's uh, not so okay in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. And so most people age out of management. They want to stay in the asset class because, as you mentioned, it, is, uh, it was uh, arguably uh, the very first and most important manifestation of wealth of value and it's still very very important today and so they want to stay in the asset class uh, they certainly don't want to give 30 40 percent of their equity to the government by way of taxes and uh, depreciation claw back uh, but they don't want to manage anymore they want a more passive role and that's usually when they come to DST, and that's why the DST segment or the DST space just keeps getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger because of the inexorability of aging. And, and most people at that point are looking for safety of principle, 
continuity of income stream, hopefully an increasing income stream, and hopefully some appreciation at time mm-hmm. of sale. But the primary concern is easing out of the management role so their ownership better reflects their more passive lifestyle, a security of principle, and stability and predictability of income stream. And most, uh, most operating assets in the DST space historically have done a pretty good job uh, that way. And when we talk about operating assets, we're talking about those property types that have multiple tenants, shorter lease intervals. Uh, the multiple tenant uh, makes it not impossible, certainly, but harder to negatively impact the rental income stream because you've got multiple doors. You can have multiple doors in any one property that you're diversified across. And so uh, there's some inherent safety there. Uh, So, and historically uh, operating assets, whether it's multifamily, senior living, self-storage, to a certain extent student housing have weathered the ups and downs in the economy fairly well. So, so I think it's sort of interesting. You're talking about multiple doors giving sort of diversified income, obviously. You're not dependent upon, I mean, a, a big box single tenant building is very, very attractive for somebody that's done with management until a, until that thing goes dark, right? And then you got, especially in a recessionary time, you got potentially a big problem there. But I think that, you know, that, that DST, that, you know, one of the things I like about it is you've got obviously the ability to diversify your investments, not just in two different asset types, but uh, you know, a, a across a, a you know whatever region you choose to. But I mean, most DST offerings are multi-asset offerings too, right? So you're not just looking at you're buying a fractional interest in a portfolio of properties. It's not typically a single asset. Or what percentage of DSTs are single asset offerings? Oh, well, it's you know, it's probably. 70, 30, 60, 40. Yeah. When DST started almost a quarter of a century ago, it was usually one property, one program. Uh, the, the products matured nicely. Uh, we now have single DST programs that have multiple assets in them of a type. Uh, by way of example, you can have a, it's very easily done or more easily done with self-storage because storage assets from a structural standpoint are pretty simple, pretty cookie, can be pretty cookie cutter. And so you can have a single DST program, but you can have multiple storage properties in it spread out over different states for diversification pur- purposes. Uh, you can have the same thing, the same thing is true with multi- multifamily. You can, have multi- you can have a single DST program with multiple DST, or excuse me, multiple multifamily programs in it, or multifamily properties in it. And uh, again, we're not, we have not historically been a big fan of retail albeit a lot of the redundancy that was present in bricks and mortar retail when the internet has arrived has now been worked out of the system because there's been very little new retail development the last six, seven, eight years, okay? And so a lot of it's gone away, some of it's been converted, transitioning to other things, but you can have portfolios of small box retail stores. So um, the products matured very nicely where you can have multiple properties in an individual DST for diversification purposes. Interesting, interesting. Well, hey, this has been a lot of fun today. I guess I started off cranky. That's okay. I'm a lot happier now. Okay. I, it's, I think it's fun. Yeah, I think one point because you made it earlier. There are there there are very fundamental changes occurring in the financial environment of commercial real estate, whether it's insurance, financing, what have you. As rates go up, the environment's becoming more challenging, and I would I would I'll pause it that that is a strength of DST as an alternative going forward for real property owners because you don't have to qualify for your own loan. Most DSTs come prepackaged with uh, with with bank debt 
because the institutional providers have multiple relationships that way. They can borrow more cheaply than we can. So that makes it, that gives you as a, a property investor in 1031 exchange a painless option because you don't have to struggle with refinancing a property. And I'd also posit that uh, in commercial real estate, size matters. And if you're a big operator with big, very big portfolios, you're go- going to find it easier to continue to provide insurance for those properties and probably at a more affordable rate than individual landlords can do themselves. So I think those were two important points you made earlier mm-hmm. that, that are out there, yeah. but it's not front and center for most investors, and they need to be aware of that because it's going to make their life more difficult, and there are answers to that. Yeah, I think the loan environment today, it gets tough. It's, it takes time to get things done, no matter what it is. Honestly, it takes time to get insurance policies written, too. So I think one, one other comment I, I would have with, with what I'm seeing with our clients buying into your product is that if you're living off the income off these, these properties that you've relinquished, you, you need some income. And, and really, from the date somebody reaches out to you and engages you to buy an asset to the date, I mean, if somebody wants to get their money working and get a return ASAP, what's that time horizon look like? Uh, the, only, the, only real, the only real time is in bringing the investor up to speed with regard to the DST product than having him or her choose an appropriate property mix. That's where the time is because once you've decided as an investor what property or properties you want to go into, then completing the necessary forms, getting you closed and cash flowing is probably going to happen in five or six business days. So the close happens Pretty nice. very quickly. Yeah. So. so. I always like to say the only dumb question is one that's not asked. If somebody's got questions, where can they find you, Mr. Smith? Go to uh, peregrineprivatecapital.com or 503-241-4949. We're pretty much there 24-7, and, uh, and we like to help. If you've liked the content we provided today, please like and subscribe. It really helps you out. If you've got questions or, or some content you'd like to have see covered, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. You can also, if you've got questions on different video uh, topics or suggestions for us, you can reach out to see more, C-M-O-O-R-E at 1031exchange.com. That's a beautiful young lady behind the camera today who is celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday, CC. Happy birthday. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again soon. And uh, looking forward to great, bright days ahead. Yes, sir. Yep. Bright, days. Yep. bright days. Bright days. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.